this. Uh, thank you, Asma, for the introduction. So it's really nice to see a lot of faces uh, in this track. So like she mentioned, I'm Bharti Jayasekara, and I currently play a technical lead role in API Manager Research and Development Team. And I uh, sometimes uh, lead API Manager support team as well. And in addition to that, uh, I uh, time to time get, uh, get to work with uh, API Manager clients all around the world. Right, so today my uh, topic is API Marketplaces, the enterprise version. So in this topic, I will be basically talking about as an enterprise, why you need an API Marketplace for your enterprise and how you can get there. And then uh, I will be talking about uh, a few case studies uh, of our clients who already uh, are using an API marketplace. So I'll start with smartphones. So if we think about uh, how we use our phones in a typical day, apart from uh, making calls, so we, are uh, we use that uh, to send text messages and maybe to check emails and read news and maybe to listen to music, buy stuff from internet uh, and tweet, etc. So basically we spend a lots of time on our mobile phones. So, so you can understand how these mobile applications have become a crucial part of our day-to-day -day life. So because of the same reason, uh, there is an uh, economy built around these applications. So we call it app economy. So uh, if you look at the application market, uh, if you uh, look at the numbers, uh, it shows that within next few years, it is reaching uh, $6 trillion uh, in uh, 2021. So to give you a reference to understand, uh, understand that value, if you think, the, uh, th uh, think this as a country, this is the country with the third largest economy in the world. So you can understand how huge uh, this market is. So now you understand the, uh, the importance of a, uh, applications in business, and then we come to this. Yes, behind every successful application, there is an API. So why I'm telling that is, an application is very lightweight. It's a very thin layer. To do any heavy work, it has to call some external location. So that is done via APIs. So that's how APIs are becoming so important in the business. Right. So, so with APIs becoming so important in this integration world, so there is an uh, economy built around these APIs as well. So that's how this uh, API economy became a thing. So initially, people thought that API economy is uh, API economy is about monetizing APIs. Uh, but that wasn't actually the case. There were organizations ac that actually monetized APIs. Uh, for example, Google monetized their uh, Google Maps API, and there are a, a set of other organizations who did similar stuff. But that was not very common. Uh, so if you analyze uh, recent history of API world, uh, uh, especially, I mean, about API economy, you'll understand that there are other factors which contributes API economy. So one of the main thing I can see is speed to market. So for example, if you think, uh, let's see, if, uh, if you develop some API, and uh, exposed to the world, external people can use that your API and build applications on top of that 
then they can go to market quickly. So that's the this speed to market th means. So as an uh, as the API developer, you can go for a, a, a business deal to share revenue uh, of those applications. So that's one aspect of uh, API economy. Then the next one is knowing the unknown. That means if you think of a typical enterprise, uh, usually they have uh, business units. Usually they run uh, very independently uh, and they uh, hardly interact with each other. But if you have APIs exposing uh, their capabilities as an enterprise, uh, the enterprise can uh, use those APIs and innovate on top of that. Then they can find uh, new revenue resources as well. So that's how this uh, knowing the unknown uh, becomes part of, uh, contributes uh, API economy. And then if you have access to different information through APIs, you can play around it. You can experiment. So uh, uh, if I give you a, a similar uh, example, uh, think of a case where you go to eBay or Amazon and try to buy something. So when you go to that uh, checkout page uh, or uh, look at your shopping list, uh, they are show, sometimes showing a list inside saying that you might be interested uh, uh, with about this as well. So as consumers, sometimes we go and buy those stuff which we, uh, which we didn't think of originally. So that's how, that's how it works. So these are the main factors of API economy. Right. Then to have a better API economy, you need to have a better API ecosystem. So an APIs ecosystem has multiple parts. Mainly, it has API producers, and then it has API consumers, and then there should be a platform which facilitates the interactions between these two parties. So uh, actually, the API marketplaces are this, are the, this platform which we are talking about. So before... Uh, Talking more about API marketplaces, I would uh, I would like to quickly talk about this five versus platform business models. Uh, Nadisha also talked uh, about this in the morning session, but I will quickly go through that in case uh, you were not in the in the morning session. So I hope uh, you uh, you are familiar with you have heard of Britannica or Encarta. Uh, they were encyclopedias some time back. So if you think about the difference between them and Wikipedia, uh, basically uh, in uh, Britannica and Encarta, their content uh, production uh, resource, content uh, creation source was a central hub. Basically it was some organization. But in Wikipedia, it's different. Wikipedia is just a platform which connect content creators and content consumers, right? So in the Britannica or Encarta's model, we call pipe model, and Wikipedia model, we call it platform model. So another example for this platform model is Uber. If you compare Uber with some taxi company, taxi companies has these assets like uh, vehicles and drivers, but Uber is just a platform. They do not have any assets, uh, but still, they are in business. Maybe they, are, uh, they have more demand uh, than the uh, uh, normal uh, taxi companies because they connect uh, drivers and riders from uh, the public. And uh, another example is Airbnb. It's, it's, it's very similar to Uber. Uh, where it connects uh, guests and hosts. So if we think similarly about APIs, you have 
API marketplaces, where it's a platform which connects API creators and API consumers. And uh, the API marketplace should be able to facilitate all the interactions between these two parties. So I will come, uh, so it has to provide these tool, tools to fa facilitate uh, those interactions. I will uh, come to that later. So if you can remember, the, my topic is API marketplaces, the enterprise solution. So I will be mainly focusing on uh, an organization's internal marketplaces rather than talking about uh, externally exposed public marketplaces. In fact, that's how typically a, a com an organization should start. They should start internally and then they can decide whether they want to go externally or not. So if you think about a typical organization, like I mentioned before, they have business units. And th these business units can have different, uh, they can have different, uh, uh, like different uh, deployment models, different uh, programming models, different uh, storage patterns, etc. And uh, they could be very heterogeneous. Uh, they are, uh, usually there are uh, very less number of interactions uh, between these business units. Even if there are ones, usually they are file-based. So uh, that can usually happen uh, via file drops or batch-based uh, sync jobs, etc. So these are very uh, inefficient uh, communications. So th uh, therefore, these integrations are not very agile. So then, uh, since these uh, business units operate very standalone manner, it's possible that uh, each business unit is doing the same task on their own. So that's a waste of resources and time. So, so if you have a model where you can expose your capabilities, each of your business units capabilities, and if you let other business units use those, then you can get rid of all these problems. Uh, right, so for that, to have that, you need to have an API marketplace for your enterprise. So I will explain uh, what are the things you can do to have that marketplace in your enterprise. Uh, so first of all, if you take a single business unit, you need to expose your services. For that, you need to have services. So it could be new services, or if you have any legacy services, maybe you can wrap them with uh, some REST services. Or if you have some monolith applications, maybe you can break them into small parts and expose them as microservices. Like that, you can have services in different ways. So once you have these services, then you have to expose them as APIs. For that, to facilitate that process, you need to have your marketplace. So when I, uh, so, so I earlier mentioned that there are, there's a, a marketplace should have different tools. So for example, if you think about API producers, there should be tools to uh, apply security to their uh, APIs, apply different policies uh, such as uh, throttling policies, thre uh, threat protection policies, etc. They should be able to apply these po uh, policies. Then they should be able to tag APIs so that consumers can easily group uh, these APIs. Then there should be ways to uh, version their APIs, then they should be able to manage the life cycle of their APIs. And uh, then most importantly, they, they should have, there should be tools so that they can document their APIs. And uh, then last, uh, there should be ways uh, to monetize their APIs as well. So that's about API producers. If we think about API consumers, 
they, sh they, they should be able to uh, search and find out APIs they want. Then they should be able to try out those APIs within the marketplace, marketplace itself. And then they, have to, they should be able to read documentation about APIs. And then most importantly, they should be able to give feedback about APIs within the marketplace itself. So with all these options, you have to build your API marketplace. So if you, if you use uh, W3 API Manager for this, all the features I talked about are available out of the box as features, as first class features. So once you have your uh, business uh, BU level marketplace, then you can uh, create an go for an enterprise level marketplace. So that means, uh, so each business unit has business unit has their own marketplace, and then they can decide whether their API should go to the enter their enterprise level marketplace. So once you have that enterprise level marketplace, uh, then optionally you can decide whether you want to expose. Uh, this marketplace to external world or not. So this is a reference implementation of what I just talked about. Like I mentioned, there are different business units. So they can have different uh, backends. They can be heterogeneous. So, so they can have, so they have to build API marketplaces for, uh, for themselves. So each uh, business unit will have different marketplaces, then, then there's a separate API marketplace for the enterprise. So you can see the interactions between uh, internal BU developers and external uh, developers like partners, etc. how they can connect to the enterprise market. Right, so now, you have your own uh, enterprise marketplace for your enterprise, but that does not mean that will give you what you expected originally. For that, you need to think of this sustainability and growth aspect as well. So there's a, one, uh, <coughs> there's a uh, fundamental challenge in these uh, platform models we talked about. That's this chicken and egg problem. So you have a platform and you need both content creators and content consumers at the same time. But uh, API, if you think about API marketplace, API consumers will not be coming if there are no API producers. And if there are no enough API consumers, uh, API producers won't be coming to your system. So this is a chicken and egg problem. So if you think about uh, businesses like Uber and Airbnb, they also face the same uh, challenge initially. But with their strategies, they could uh, overcome this uh, challenge. So you also need some strategy to overcome this challenge. So basically you want more people coming uh, to your plat uh, API marketplace and do activities. So to get more people, you need to think of uh, some incentives. So since we are talking about this enterprise marketplace, these incentives can be a part of their uh, employees' performance appraisal process, or you can come up with some uh, awarding mechanism. Uh, likewise, you can have uh, incentives. And then maybe you can put some leaderboards saying these are the mostly used APIs and these are the owners of that. So that encourages people to do more. And then maybe you can uh, organize monthly hackathons uh, that will uh, encourage people to innovate on top of uh, using, uh, innovate using your marketplace. And as a business, like I mentioned earlier, that will help uh, you to identify new uh, revenue sources. And then uh, one of the most important fact is reducing the entry barrier for new users. 
So if you think about API producers, they may not know how to secure APIs. They may not know how to apply different kind of policies. So you have to have uh, nice tutorials, nice samples, so that they can learn easily. And if you think about API consumers, uh, they may not know how to generate tokens and how to use those tokens to uh, invoke an API. So to cover all these small uh, use cases, you need to have nice tutorials and samples. And then if you uh, think, think about uh, application developers, uh, you, should, you can provide SDKs so that they can easily integrate those APIs to their applications. So that will, that, uh, these stuff are very important for this integration agility. And then this uh, transparency is very important for your marketplace. So there are different ways you can achieve transparency. Uh, so one is this observability events. That means uh, we, uh, if you think about different activities of your API marketplace, uh, you, if you can emit events for these different activities, people can catch those events and act based on that. Uh, if I give you uh, one, uh, one example, uh, let's think of, uh, if, you can give, uh, if you can emit events in case of when uh, an API provider creates a new version of his or her API, when you, if you can emit, in, uh, emit an event in that case, uh, they can, the, the, the system can catch that event. So you can uh, write, write it to work that way. You can catch that and you can notify subscribers saying, hey, there's a new version of this API. Maybe uh, you will like it, like it. So like that, there are different things you can do with these events. So, so you, you can uh, do that to improve the transparency of your system. And then feedback data. So as uh, so I, I, men I mentioned that API consumers should be able to provide feedbacks for the APIs. So uh, there should be a way to uh, let API creators know about this feedback. And then they are, uh, if you can provide uh, like API consumption patterns, what, is the, what are the usage patterns of each API, if you can give those the information to the API uh, producers, they can fine tune their APIs uh, so that they matches the real expectation of API consumers. So, so as an organization, you can get the maximum out of it if you do that. And then uh, one other thing is, uh, if you think about API consumer side, if you can give proper error codes and meaningful messages, when, they, when application developers integrate APIs to their applications, they can write the application in a very smooth manner. Uh, so those are the things that, uh, <coughs> that you should think about, uh, when you, uh, that you should consider when you think about the sustainability and growth aspect of it. Right. So now I will be talk, uh, talking about few uh, customer case studies uh, about clients who already have API marketplaces. So first one is uh, Bank of New York Mellon. So they have this uh, Nexon uh, digital ecosystem. So that's, a, that's basically an API uh, marketplace. So BNY Mellon uh, have these smaller teams who owns very small components. So each one could use different technologies in their uh, components. But they, they wanted to make sure that each team exposed a set of REST APIs exposing their capabilities. So that whenever uh, an internal application developer wants to use that, they can easily come and uh, discover APIs. So they, 
uh, used WS2 API manager, and they developed, developed this uh, Nexon uh, platform. And then StubHub is one of the very old uh, client of WS2 API manager. They are basically a ticketing uh, company. They sell tickets for events. So they have uh, uh, services like uh, to uh, uh, give information about events and then uh, services to purchase events, etc. So they wanted to expose these services to internally as well as externally, so that people uh, can use those uh, APIs and build APIs on top of that. So they, they wanted to use that because uh, whenever someone, so when people create more applications on top of that APIs, it's another, it's a new uh, revenue uh, source for them. So that that's what was the, their model. Then uh, Nadish also talked about uh, this dialogue use case in the morning session. So dialogue is a telco company. It's a part of this uh, Asiata group. Asiata is uh, one of the largest telco uh, providers in uh, Asia Pacific region. So dialogue is dialogue is the one operating in Sri Lanka. So dialogue has this uh, telco services which uh, internal, uh, internal uh, teams are developing. So they wanted to expose these services to internally as well as externally, just like in uh, previous cases I talked about. So they uh, came up, uh, they used WS2 API Manager and developed their marketplace, and then they exposed this marketplace to the external world as well. So you can, uh, this is their public URL, if you access, you can see the public uh, APIs that they have uh, exposed to the world. So I'm, uh, I have reached the end of my presentation. So that diagram, uh, Nadish also uh, mentioned that diagram in his presentation, so I won't be uh, going into details with that. So, I, uh, so as a summary, so I explained why, as an enterprise, you need an API marketplace for your enterprise, and then how you can get there. So, uh, so if you try to build uh, an API marketplace to your enterprises, and if you think in that journey you will need our help, just talk to us. We are uh, happy to help you in your journey. Uh, so, thank you.